Honey cream. Yes, 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 How yes. You? How you doing? How you doing? Sorry for the lateness. Oh, no. Tardiness. I believe that time is never wrong. Okay. Like, whenever you make it somewhere, when you do something, it was that time for you to do it. Okay. You know, so this is your perfect time. All right. And it's at the one o'clock hour. But a uh, 100 cream, I was interested, first of all, the name mm -hmm. for yourself. And mm -hmm. then I read a little, a little bit about your bio. I read the whole bio. Uh-huh. But tell us a little bit more about yourself and how'd you get the name? Well, look, the name, um, like I always say, man, um, if you keep up with me, I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with me, but I try to keep everything. Like, mm -hmm. I've been known for how curt I am with everything I do. Like, I don't believe in cutting corners. I believe in being straightforward about everything I do say. So, you know, you know, that's like, you know, in these days of time, that's called keeping it 100. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, just my demeanor, you know, coming up as a youth. I've always been a laid back kind of cool guy. So that's what, you know, the cash rules, the cream. And it's like, yeah, I said, well, 100 cream, you know. And of course, the AKA Tony Lane on the name. And, you know, that's part of my last name, my first name. Right, um, right. So tell a little bit more about yourself, about how you get into music and this book. We're going to talk about this book okay. soon. Okay, all right. Well, music, uh, um, music, I've been doing music all my life. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I've been around music my whole life. Um, my family, you know, whether it's in the, you know, the church or the streets or whatever, man. They just do music, instruments, you know. We grew up playing instruments and everything. So, you know, it's just innate in us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So what is your influence behind your music? What kind of music do you do? My, you know, I could do any music, okay. but I pre preferably I love to do, uh, uh, I love to do real life pain music, you know, to talk about real struggles that's going on in everyday society, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't like to do a lot of the, um, the so-called bling music, you know, the, you know, just the stupid stuff, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, more, you know, you know, you know, more of my music is going to touch home, you know, I'm from, I'm from poverty, so. So, man, when you listen to my music, it's going to be poverty. You know, I don't cut no corners with it, you know, but, you, but you're going to feel it, though. You know what I'm saying? So where is home? Where are you from? I'm from Goldsboro. Goldsboro? North Carolina. Okay, so uh -huh. you're from the Carolinas. Mm -hmm. They say that. Definitely, definitely. Awesome. So who are your influences as um, far as your music? Who do you listen to? As far as my music? Yeah. Well, really, um, my biggest influence, um, and though I mean, he's a gospel uh, artist, um, is my dad. My dad, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? My dad taught me really everything I know about music, you know. Um, I came up playing instruments, my brothers playing instruments, my sisters. So, you know, um, I was introduced into it through him, okay. you know, you know, I believe that, you know, I believe that all of, all of us is, um, uh, 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 um, 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 born into some type of creativity. Indeed, and look, yes. I believe that music was already in me, but you know, I man, he brought it to us at a young age, 10, 11 years old. So, you know, man, he, you know, I. He had me growing up playing drums and my brothers on guitars, you know, so like music, yeah, music right. is there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when it comes to him, he, you know, he can do it all. Yeah. He can do it all. He can sing. And I mean, he can sing. Okay. Sing. Sing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, he can sing, you know, man, he plays all the instruments. So it's like, you know, you know, I had no better role model, you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But him, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and he's the best. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, as far as like the rap go, right. of course, you know, you have like, you know, your Jay Z's, you know, your Nas, you know, my, I listen to the pioneers, you know, I don't. Yo, this new school, new school stuff. Right? Nah, I mean, I mean, I listen to it because, like I said, I tell people a lot, man, you got to be able to compete, you know? And so, man, I believe in um, trying to explore my range to show people that I can do what is in. But, you know, overall, man, I love to stick it to the, you know, the old school. Right. Yeah, old school, school, you know what I'm saying? Better. It's a whole lot better. Absolutely. So this book, uh -huh. Good Girls, uh -huh. I don't know if you hold that up for yourself. Okay. Well, that's your copy. I got a copy. You hold that. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, All yeah, right. yeah. All right. Thank I, you. I hold this one. You know you got to sign this, right? Yeah, I'll sign it. I'll definitely okay. sign it. Awesome. So tell us what Good Girls. Show the cover to everybody. We're on live. With what can't you see? So All right. There it is. You got it? You might have to tilt a little bit because it has a glare. Yeah. Okay, is it glaring now? No, come up. Come up Hold it up. There you go. Right. right. And then tilt it forward just a little oh, bit. Right yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, no, you didn't have to do that. I, I don't have an iPhone. Mine works fine. But oh, like okay. The angle, you put it at iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, then, that's a shout out to you. That was, All right. That was a little shame. All right. Team Android. Like, yeah. Yeah, All right. Team, team Android. Android, work it out. So, All yeah, right. you don't have to do no tilt. Mine, so the, it work it out. So, do you need me to keep holding it continuously? No, no, or? You, you, no you, give it to me. 
I can put it back down. Well, this is yours anyway, so oh, oh, yeah. Okay, you gonna sign it too? Yeah, yeah, I oh, saw, I'll sign it. It's yours anyway. It's yours good. anyway. Of course, right? of course. I got to make a grand entrance, you know. Right. Well, thank you. Definitely. So tell us what Good Girls is about. Well, Good Girls, Good Girls is about um. Oh man, how can I put this without making you not want to go buy it? Because I told you the whole story. <laughs> um, true, 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 true. um, yeah. it's it's basically um, it's a story about four women. Mm -hmm. Well, four girls from different parts of the city, you know, you know, of course, Goldsboro, because that's where I'm from. Okay. And um, what it does is um, it addresses the different lifestyles that they come up in, you know, and the conditions that they come up in. Okay. It shows you how the experiences is what molds the women into what they are after they're older. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it shows um, how different areas of the city can bring can bring a different upbringing on on each woman. So I named it Good Girls because when you typically think of a good woman, when people say, "Well, um, well, she's a good girl, well, she's a bad girl," you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You typically have like a a set of uh, attributes and elements in your head that right. say that's a good woman. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to try to um, write a book that challenged what the normal definition of a good woman is. Okay. So it's gonna take you through the lives of all four women, you know, the ups and downs, no cutting corners, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't matter, it's from sex, drama, suspense, everything, you know what I'm saying? And in, in the end, there's some things that some people may say, well, that's not a good woman, you know what I mean, based on the thing that she's been through in her life. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's gonna readdress it and let them know that you are who you are at the end of uh, 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 your experiences and after you take a positive approach to what you've been through. You know what I'm saying? So that's what, see, I'm telling too much. No, but yeah, you know what, that's I'm not, telling it too. No, it I'm telling it too. Though. But you know, huh? I feel like it's funny because like, it's like everything is coming together. You know, you say time is like, there's no wrong time. Right. Uh -huh. But it's funny because before you got here and laid the groundwork, uh -huh. you just heard about work being done Hashtag, don't be hiding, Mr. Carter. <laughs> anyway, he, he just wrote a song about oh, like, see? women and working and how it's, you know, it just he wanted to showcase, like, women doing their thing, regardless okay. of what anybody else is saying and uh -huh. doing. And then it's weird that you just brought the book, and on the book yeah. is about these women who are either they, regardless of what they're doing, considered good girls, uh -huh. they're working their issue and doing it their way. Their way, so exactly. That's, that's exactly. how it all ties together. Like, exactly. See? Yeah. Timing, perfect timing there. And see, you you wouldn't have known that. Like, say you weren't here, so you didn't know that. Okay. Or you got here that we were already in that mindset of doing it. Then we talked about the me time, and we talked about right. that. And now you came with the book, and so it kind of ties everything together all at once. That's deep. Right. That is deep. Okay. So this isn't the first. Is this the first book that you? Well, published? that's the first one that I published because published. um okay. actually um I don't know if Coach told you this um or not, but you know I spent a lot of time away. Yeah. You know, in the penitentiary. And so um, when I was in there, um, aside of what my dad already poured into me, mm -hmm. you know, I just dug deep inside my creativity. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I've always been a writer. You yeah. have like 10 novels? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I have right. 10. I have 10, but that's the only one that's published. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I um, that one right there was more so, that, that, that one right there gave me more of the wow factor, right? I wrote okay. it in 2003. By the way, okay. I rewrote it four times yeah. before I came home. You know what I'm saying? And um, I was letting people read the manuscript, and they was like, "Wow, I'm feeling that good girls, the good girls, the good girls." Like you know how you mm -hmm. like I look, I write music, yeah. and look, you may let somebody hear it, and they're like, "Nah," mm -hmm. and then you go write another song, it's like, "Nah," and then you write that one, and they say, "Whoa, that's it right there." That's yeah. it right there. So, 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 man, that book right there was the first wow factor. You know what I'm saying? So I said, man, that's gonna be the first one I publish when I get out. Yeah. But I actually got a, a publishing deal before I came home. Yeah. And um, you know, man, it didn't, you know, it didn't pan out the way I wanted to pan out. So you know, man, I want to do the independent route. It's you know, a struggle. You know, that's something so weird because my brother is writing a book. He's in the penitentiary. Now. Okay. He's been in there for some years. But okay. He he published a couple um art. We published. Okay. So he, he published a couple poems and like books and stuff like that. And then he wrote a book. It's not like this, but it's more on the lines of like um basically like the help stuff. He wrote it to his daughter. Okay. Just like, this is what you need to look for. This is what you need to do as far as like guys. 
But then, like I said, he's working it so that when he gets out, it's something for him to do. But it's like almost finished. I'm like so excited for him to like to mm-hmm. release it yeah. because, like you said, he wrote other stuff. And we were like, that's good. It's nice. But when he wrote this, I was like, oh no. Yeah, that's this, the one. This is, that's the one. You don't get hot on this. I, mm-hmm. This is when you have to push him and get him to that. And be like, no. The, yeah, it's nice talking to you. What about your book? Right. You know, Definitely. what about your book? Definitely. But you need that type of motivation and stuff like around you. My sister says she um she likes you too. Oh, she do. Well, yeah, and she said they need ingredients to the love bath. I'm gonna read a couple of these things. She okay. said, We see you, mommy. That's what she said. <laughs> she said, Hey, Vanessa. Oh, Tiffany Upchurch Rivera says, Nice cover for that book. That's nice. Thanks, right. thanks, Tiff. And then, uh, she said that she made a reference to um, Mr. Carter who left about his work that is dope mm-hmm. and how everything ties together. So that's very right. nice. Thing. Thanks for your time. Right. That's good. Okay. Well, he definitely need to um, push on it and keep going because now, man. It's really a time of independency right now. You know, a lot of people's not looking for a lot of, you don't need a lot of cosigns no more. You know, yeah. you know, that's all you got to do is go put your mind to it and, you know, everything is there. And you it's know. funny, Real Raw and Relevant on Monday is talking about how to self-publish your own book. Mm-hmm. See, see, how everything, everything is falling like dominoes. That mm-hmm. is creepy. I mean, it's mm-hmm. good, but it's creepy right. that everything is, just so happened her topic for this week is how to self-publish your own book. And I wouldn't have another way, like, um, I mean, that's why I haven't put out the other 10, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, I have about 10 more and a lot of people say, well, why haven't you published them? Why haven't you published them? It's, um, I do so much branding right now, traveling and trying to get my name out on like on another level that, you know, I believe in waiting to bring them babies out mm-hmm. and, you know, so they can get the right shine that they deserve, you know, and then, and then, you know, good girls is always going to be new to people who don't know, you know, exactly. I mean, you never knew it was out two years, you know, I mean, it's new to you. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You know, right. I just changed the cover of it a few times, you know what I'm saying, and brought it back out. So, you know, I mean, until it gets the platform that we need, you know, and then we're going to drop the rest of them in due time, you know. So, you know, you know, I'm not in a rush. You know I mean? It took me 10 years to write them. So, you know, James Patterson and a whole lot of people, um, um, uh, man, what's the, um, uh, uh, Stephen King. Okay. Um, Stephen yeah. King wrote a whole lot of books, and um, people see the movies now and don't even know that they're like thirty years old. Right. The books are thirty years old. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you know, with patience, you know, I mean, everything takes patience. You know what I'm saying? And and I believe that's going to be a lot of success behind the books. Do you have any um, influences behind your writing? Oh, my writing. Yeah. Oh, man, people like Omar Tari for one, and by the way, uh, Kwame T. Kwame T. Man, free Kwame T. T. Man. Um, that's a good dude, man. Um, he's one of my greatest influences as far as um, as far as um, 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 bringing me, let me know the reality of that it can happen. You know what I'm saying? Like this guy had about two or three books published before uh, 2004, and um, you know he was he was uh, 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 um, gaining revenue and everything. And I, you know, I found that fascinating. Like, wow, he did this in the penitentiary. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually reading reading his books and things like this and he did it at a time where a lot of uh, uh, blacks mm-hmm. or black authors wasn't really shining right. inside the uh, world of authorship you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. so I was like wow man and um you know man I got with him a lot and you know man he dropped a lot of pointers he read a lot of manuscripts of course I didn't let him read a lot of my manuscripts yeah. because you know some things you keep to yourself but um you know as far as the jewels and stuff man I really appreciate him for dropping a lot of jewels on me man because mm-hmm. in a situation like that you know, um, you know, like Snoop Dogg say, man, the game is to be sold, not told. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of people can really charge you for information, and he just gave it to me freely. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so I try to do the same thing back on my music, um, books. You know, I just try to, you know, each one teach one. You know, right. and so um, he's definitely one of my biggest ones. Omar Tari, uh, James Patterson. You know, it's not just blacks. Right. You know, yeah, James yeah. Patterson right. is one of my biggest writers. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a lot more though. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more. I just got to go down the list right now. You know, I'm trying to brand me right now at Bronco Radio. So we're going to keep it 100 cream. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so how often do you read? Do you read a lot? Uh, uh, I don't read as much as I did right. uh, back then, yeah. but I do try to read. I do try to read, man, because um, I'm kind of upset with my uh, literature right now. I mean, I've fallen off a lot. You know, I see a lot of language and stuff that I used to know. I used to be sharp on and I'm, you know, so... You know, I try to turn up on my reading every now and again, you know what I'm saying? Right. But I don't read as much as I used to, mm-hmm. you know, but I read anything, newspapers, it doesn't matter what it is, I got to read it, you know what right. I'm saying? And Coach Miles, uh, shout out to Ursula Martin Miles, uh, she had told me that you are a community servant. 
Mm-hmm. Things in the community. Mm-hmm. Speak Definitely. on that. Definitely. Well, well, um, at the moment, man, I have a book bag drive. Okay. A book bag drive that I do with one of my close partners, man, uh, Mr. Jermaine Dawson, man. Uh, we got together about four years ago, and um, we do two things in a year. We do a Christmas giveaway, mm-hmm. and we raise uh, book bags for the back to school giveaway. And um, our back to school giveaway is about to be August twelfth. It's and coming up next Goldsboro? month. We do it in Goldsboro, okay. you know, and it's like one of the biggest ones. And um, I try to make it, you know, real hip for everybody around the city to come together and just make giving the thing to do yeah. for kids that's you know you know that go without you know and um you know and I do it because that's where I'm from. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm from. You know, man. I came up around people that had it bad. You know, they didn't have it. You know, we didn't have it. As much and so you know, I just wanted to do it whether I was on this level or this level, you know, because there's nothing to do with community service. You don't have to wait until you blow up to do it. You can do it Indeed. whenever. You know what I'm saying? It's so like the most important time to do it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So um, and so it's been a great success because every time we do it, it's you know, man, people that I never knew that watch, you know, from all cultures and everything. They, they usually did, you know, they chip in, they call. They donate book bags, and you know we give away anywhere from two hundred to four hundred book bags, That's full of um, full of you know supplies and things like that. You know, have games in the park for the kids. It's really exciting, you know what I'm saying? And I'm looking forward to really grow in the next five years. Man, I really, really want it to be huge. Okay. Uh, you know, I, you know. How I gotta, huge? How big do you see it? Man, you I want. Would want be like statewide, all the cities. Man, as far as all the cities. I don't think I don't think I'm ready to take on all the cities yet. <laughs> right. No, you like, know what I'm saying? Like cities, like um. The only thing I really want to do is, as far as pulling in cities is probably bringing in extra, uh, maybe, talent. Yeah. Because, man, right now I got like a kid's talent show. You know, they display their talent when they're there. You know, they do uh, games, you know, kickball, dodgeball, you know, the bouncy houses, food and everything like that. I really want to focus on my area right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Which, you know, because I'm only one or two people. You know what I mean? And um, I want to get it as big. It's so big that really we can supply almost everybody that's without you know what i'm saying when it gets so big that people call in and say hey i got a thousand book bags to get to you to pass out like and i've been you know i got an email from some walmart representatives last week um um saying saying that they wanted to help you know but it was kind of too late for me to contact me i'm more of a hands-on because i grew up in the area where i had to go out and get it whether it was the right way or the wrong way you know what i'm saying so i'm not used to having that send an email and mm-hmm. wait for somebody to do it. I'm used to getting up, going to get it, and making it happen, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, to this day, a lot of people didn't know that, you know, that we had to go out and we and we hustle for donations, you know what I'm saying? We hustle these donations. We approach a lot of people. We talk, you know, and a lot of stuff we do is, do is at our own time. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, and that just shows the dedication, you know, and people come and they go, but we're going to be here, man, doing it every year, you know what I mean, as long as I'm breathing, as long as God mm-hmm. allowed me to do it. You know, and um, my grandmother would have did it if she was here. So, you know what I'm saying? I just love to see the kids smile, and that's all, man. Mm-hmm. You, you want to shout out any of the collaborations? Who do you collab with as far as getting the book bags and stuff? Um, the book bag? Oh, man. Um, In the past, man, I want to shout out everybody in Goldsboro. Every every hard worker. You know what I'm saying? Every uh, 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 lazy worker. I don't care what kind of worker they are. You know what I'm saying? Work. As long as you've been working and you've been dedicating to the book bag drive, we definitely want to give them a shout out. You know what I'm saying? We want to give a shout out to uh, the business, the businesses that uh, donate. You have uh, you have barber shops that give out haircuts. Um, um, you have um, oh, I mean we have so we have Brooklyn Pizza. We have Pizza Inn that donates. Uh, they donates food, mm-hmm. donate food for the kids every year. Um, we have uh, Dollar General have donated about two years straight. You know what I'm saying? Um, I have Kona Ice right now. They want to come out. Um, I'm, you know, man, I'm waiting for a phone call back from them probably sometime this week about some more stuff. It's just a lot of businesses, man. Um, a few, a few politicians. You know, look, they they come write checks for us and things like that out of different parties: the Democratic Party, the Republican Party. So you know, I don't have no beef with neither party. You know what right. I'm saying? So it's just, you know, it's a blessing. Mm-hmm. It's a blessing, man. Well, I'm going to introduce my journal jars to you. These are jar, um, jars that I use for uh, support groups that okay. I facilitate. And I bring them on the show so that we can get to know the guests a little bit better. All right. So we have the f- Reflect jar. And excuse the writing because it's a little faded. All right. I've been using this for almost two years now. Um, but this is uh, full of reflective questions. 
and the Star's Jar has spirituality questions. All right. So you get to an uh, answer a question out of one of the jars, and you just share your answer with us. So okay. which one would you like to pick a which, question out of? Which y'all want? It doesn't matter. Oh, no, you gotta... Oh. Everybody's uh, been doing spirituality to today. Uh, but do reflect then. Okay, all right. You know, I want to be different. So, they'll pick it out. You know what? I think Carter J took my phone, so... Mm. Mm. So should I read it too? Yes, <laughs> read it out loud, man. Right about a time when work felt too real, necessary and satisfying, paid or unpaid, professional or domestic, physical or mental, also a prompt from from kicking in the wall. What is kicking in the wall? Let me see. Let me see the question. Let me see. Because I get these off Google. It's not me. Okay. Okay. Right about a time when work felt real to you, necessary and satisfying, paid or unpaid. Okay. So... Um, we'll just keep it at that. That's a uh, that's Amber Crombie's. Okay. That's a that's a work. I mean, um, work has been in my head all day. Long. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's a book that he's done. Um, but right about a time when work felt real to you, necessary and satisfying. When has work been necessary and satisfying to you? Oh, work is um. I mean, I have to split that up. Work is always work. I mean, how, how do I say? I know people watching. Um. Work is always necessary if I done it. Oh. If I had to do work, then it was necessary. Right. You know what I'm saying, man? You know, I had two baby boys. Um, you know, you have knees, and definitely, you know, man, I'm a, um, you know, I'm a convicted felon. So, you know, man, when I get a job, when I'm, when I'm lucky enough to land a good job, you know, is is very necessary. You know what I'm saying? Um, the only time work has ever felt good to me is when I was making money. You know what I'm saying? Good, you, you know, I mean, good money doing it. And right. The best work I ever done is what you're holding in your hand. You know, my books, my music, um, you know, paid paid shows and things like that. You know, when I first started experiencing going out on the road and, you know, I'm mean, just starting to reap some type of benefits for the things, you know, the hard sacrifice you put in. That's the best money I ever made, mm -hmm. you know, no matter how much it was, you know what I'm saying? You know, I got there, they paid me for promotion, they paid me for performing, yeah. they paid me, you know, they pay your room. It's, it's like, wow, you know what I'm saying? It just it just let you know, you know, I man, you know, man, how you know, man, how realistic it is, you know what I'm saying? And it could happen, you know what I'm saying? So that's like the best that's the best money, you know, I mean, satisfying work I've ever done. And that leads me back to a question that I'm gonna ask and I'm gonna ask about your contacts. And you have a book release coming up? Um yeah. for that one, no. I don't have one for that one coming okay. up. Because um, I already did that one before. Okay. Well, um, this goes back to a question that I had earlier when I read your bio. Okay. Like you've done some major openings okay. for some artists. Uh -huh. Speak about that. How did you get into that? Were you underneath the management company? Did you get in contact with mm -hmm. them yourself? Or how did that work? No. Because it was some um, pretty big names. I my there. management, um, I haven't, I've been more, I mean, more so self-managed. Okay. Self-managed. Right. Um, I'm like one of those artists. Man, I'm kind of a different kind of artist that you're talking to. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm one of those guys, man, I don't like to try to big myself up. But man, when I say I look up to Jay and people like Master P and them, I really, really, I mean, I really study this game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I study where I can come in and have a, uh, you know, I mean, an intellectual one on one from you, which you and you never know where I come from. You know right. what I'm saying? Until I mean, if if you were to go out right now and see where I come from, you'd be like, wow. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm able to talk in any setting I go to. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I don't really need a lot of management unless unless you know it just looks good enough to have one. So um. Um, a lot of my work, though, has come from um, Miss Cat Peterson. You know, I mean, she helped me a whole lot. She helped me a whole lot doing, you know, you know, doing a lot of things that I don't want to do. That's lazy of me. A lot of emails, you know, a lot of uh, phone contacts. You know, I really feel like um, that's a woman's job. You know, you know, I don't want to be biased about that, but I feel like I feel like this. Like, I just, you know, listen, listen. It's like my receptionist work. No, like, I just, I just feel like women do certain jobs better than men. You know what I'm you know saying? What I, that's not the first time I've heard that. They do jobs better than men. It's like in the, inside the industry of doing music, it's it's always good whenever you can have a pretty woman or a woman. You know what I'm saying? Right. Walking through the door and do business for you before you come show your face. Because it's like, you know, they take to a woman more quicker than they take to a, a guy. Right. And I know unless, she's unless not. Unless there's another woman on the other hand. Well, I don't think that really matters no more either. Right. 
Uh, cause women, you know, women like women these days a lot. Dudes like dudes. So. They, they do that. <laughs> hey, right. Hey, on yeah, you do. Teach his own on that one. But um, well, I'm just saying, you know, your audience would be if you know the dude is like into dudes, then you bring a dude first. Cause you bring a woman, and you never turn them off. But still, though, a woman, still though, a woman. It's just some. It's just something about a woman. The presence of a woman. It's just your. It's just something about a woman, man. Like, like, like I could be calling. I can call a little Bootsy manager for a whole year straight, and they look at me and turn their head. I can send a woman in there. She called me for two weeks straight, and she called me and said, hey, I'm at the room in Louisiana. Let's talk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, wow. So sometimes, it, you know, it pays. You know, I believe in that. I do believe what Tupac said about that right there. You got to have women. I really don't. You know, man, I appreciate the guys that follow me, you know, and the guys I got on my corner. But more so, man, I, you know, I just want to make the ladies happy, man. That's what I want to do, man. I want to keep women in my corner because uh, without a woman, man, a lot of stuff can't get done, you know. And you see what I wrote about in my first book, so we ain't got to keep right. going into that. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So, so, um, but um, yeah, I did a lot of self management, man. So, when you see me traveling, you know, I do a, um, you know, I go back and forth. But Atlanta, I go to Atlanta a lot. You know okay. what I'm saying? I just did, a, I just did an interview with um. Yeah, Black Mecca, mm -hmm. and um, I just did an interview with um, uh, DJ Waffles down there, mm -hmm. and um, he's with um, with Waka Flocka's mom, Miss Debbie. Okay. And so, All um, right. you know, they put me in the B One Hundred Radio. So, I mean, it, it's a lot of stuff. To, it's just a lot of doors be opening up. You know, I just got to take my time and keep being humble about it, and just stay in my lane. Oh, that's and, awesome. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, what are ways that people can contact you for a book, for bookings? Well, if they want to contact me, they can always go to my email. Okay. Uh, or my email is anthonylangston10, that's 10 at gmail.com. But if you ever want to find me, man, um, it's nothing. At 100 Cream. It doesn't matter what you do. I make it real simple. So, I mean, if you ever forget the name or you forget how you got to get me, it don't matter. You go to Twitter, Snap, anywhere. It's at 100CREAM. You know what I'm saying? Is there, Are there any... Final words that you would like to say as far as I asked uh, the artist earlier, if there were a message that you wish that you would have gotten at an earlier age that somebody could have told you, what would be that message now that you can give to somebody else? You can do anything you want to do. You can do anything you want to do, all right? But hard work, dedication, you know what I'm saying? And God, you know what I'm saying? Everything is there. Yeah, I would have to say that. Right, yeah. It is, but, I mean, it's, but it's, real. it's real, though. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, it sounds cliche, and I'm going to have to find a smoother way to say that so, so it sounds sound different coming from me, but that's just real. You know, a lot of people tell you um, that you can do anything you want to do, but they don't tell you the things you got to do to make that statement uphold. You know what I'm saying? Like, you mm -hmm. got to work. You got to work in anything you do in life. You know, a lot of people get um, tired. That's another thing. You know, I would never, you know, I would never convince a person to um to give up after they don't see results you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. with anything in life you got to go hard with it and until you see the right result i mean look, results you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. it's like working out um i used to be a workout a workaholic you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and people and people will give up at the 90 days that they don't see results you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but it's no. it's counts but that's how life is though you know look as long as you keep hard at something even, even if the door that you want to open up don't open up you're going to be so much developed in what you're doing, the other doors are going to be there for you to walk through. And I, I do believe that. And that just comes from studying, watching people, the way they do things. And, and, and that's the side of music, books. It doesn't matter what it is, school. It could be, you know, college. It could be anything, your job, anything. You know, look, as long as you're, if you're working and your manager see you working hard to do your job, you know, you may feel like you want to be in another department, but you didn't elevate it so much. That he said, hey, well, I don't want to put you there, but I'm going to put you in something that's equal to it in another department. But you would have never got to that job if you wouldn't have kept working hard to get to this job. You feel what I'm saying? So so I tell people to keep working hard all the time with everything they're doing. With everything they're doing. Realize is when you when you do that, when you just keep working and working on your brand, even if it's not manifesting into what it is, it's preparing you That's right. for that. Because you, that's right. you have to take a loss in order for you to understand that where you're going you need to understand this lesson now. Before That's right. You get there because if you get there and you haven't learned the lesson, you're gonna take a bigger hit here as you would have exactly. taken it exactly. when it was, you know, when it was supposed to. So it's never like a failure. It's just a stepping stone to get you mm -hmm. there and yes. get you prepared for where you have to go or where you're going. So yeah, I can attest that right there. Yeah. Like, and a lot of times, like I said, it, it's good that you, everybody keeps saying the same thing. You need to work hard. You need to work hard. You need to work hard because a lot of times in the 
I need to call them the popcorn dinner and microwave generation for everything that wants to be instant. Right. You want mm -hmm. it right now. Like, like you said, if you, you don't get it within 90 days, you're like, oh, well, I got to go do something else because it says they manifest. It's like, well, no, you got to keep working at it. Mm -hmm. It's not going, everything's not going to be handed to you. Everything's not going to pop right That's just right. when you do it. Sometimes you have to put in work. As the people say before, you have to pay your dues. Yeah, you got to pay your there's, dues. There's a process mm -hmm. that you have to do to get to where you mm -hmm. want to. And if you're not prepared, it's not going to be brought to you that, or you'll lose an opportunity to do something because you weren't prepared. That's the, and look, definitely even more in what we're doing, I mean, and what I do with, with books and music, like, that's like a, it's sort of like shooting for the NBA, but you know, man, what's better right now is like I said, everything is independent now, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you said something about the popcorn generation, you know, I deal with a lot of people right now, they feel like with, with they don't get, if they don't blow up in one, you know, in a year, then it's over, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And like, I used to be, I'm one of those kind of guys that I don't want nothing I ain't ready for. Yes, I don't want nothing that I ain't ready for. I don't care what kind of part. I don't. I don't. I don't care what level of life it is. If I'm not ready for it, I don't want it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I want it. Once I'm ready, I want it. You know. Right. You know. Look, don't deprive me of it. And um, I used to sit around, man. And um, before I started opening up and meeting people that was really in the business, and I'm mm -hmm. seeing guys that I know I rap better than. I feel like my music, my art is better than. And I'm like, man, what is it that they got? That I don't got a side of the money. You know, a lot of people always scream money, 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 money. But a lot of things, education is a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Money, money, money is easy to get, but hard to maintain. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, 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 mm -hmm. education. If you don't got it, you don't got it. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I used to sit around these conversations. I may go out of town. I may be sitting down with guys that's really on. You know. You may have a million, he may have a million, I may have about 3000 in my account. And I'm sitting, trying to have a conversation with these guys, and I'm trying to see what I'm missing other than the money. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. when they start talking the lingo, they thinking I know, but I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the things that they're talking about behind the music and behind the glitter that people really don't see, I'm lost. I mean, I'm lost, but the only thing I, I can do is, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and I'm going home, and I'm beating myself up like, dang, I didn't know that. Like, yo... I don't know this. I don't know that. I'm not ready. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I would hate for somebody to bring me in the studio, and you know, or to take me to somewhere around somebody that's a real writer. Then they start talking his lingo, you know, over brunches or whatever. And then I'm the only idiot in the, you know, in the room. Right, yeah. So, so I believe in, um, you know, I believe in educating myself on what it is I'm trying to do. Study everything you're trying to do. I would definitely tell them that. You know, if you know you want to build cars, study those cars before you go buy that business. You know what I'm saying? If you know, if you know you want to be a doctor. You know, study it before you go to school to be a doctor. You know, man. You know, man. Make sure the love is there. Make sure the passion is there for what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because without a passion, it ain't gonna last long. It ain't gonna last long. If you ain't got a passion for doing radio, it's not gonna last long. You know, after about five years, you know, it'd be a wrap for you mm -hmm. if it's not there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I would tell them definitely tell them work hard for what they want. Never stop. You know, and research everything. Educate yourself. You know what I'm saying? Then that way it won't get boring. Because this had, mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't seen a million. You know what I'm saying? I put in more than what I've profited for what I do. But I love to do it so much that I don't even notice it. I don't even notice it. Because my resume gets more thicker and thicker and thicker as I go. And I just throw it on the wall. Mm -hmm. Throw it on the wall. And then before long, you know what I mean? Once I get to send stuff to you and you start seeing my resume, that's what people don't understand. You know, look, there's things that count other than money inside yes. this game. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, you got to have a resume. Nobody wants a person with no, without a resume. No job wants you without a good resume. You know what I'm saying? They ask you to turn on the resume. Yeah, you know, they want to see your work experience. They exactly. want to see your work experience, yeah. They want to see what you were just saying. You know, my, you know my, how you deal with losses. You know, my, how do you deal with, you know, things, you know, things that don't add up. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm trying to build my resume up right now and be ready. That's you all. Are. You know what I mean? We have this thing, Ray Thomas has this thing, he's the, the uh, host that's usually here, but his thing is don't don't say try, mm -hmm. because you are doing it. Definitely, definitely, you know, you're you right. You are building up your, your resume to take out those words, those feelings, uh -huh. and to actually claim it, exactly. that your resume is getting Exactly. Big. You know, you're getting uh -huh. where, you, where you need to go. And it's it's funny that you say um, putting in more than what you're getting back, because there's a guy that I follow, Les Brown. Okay, I, love, I heard um, him before. Yeah, awesome guy. He's an awesome motivational speaker. And what he says is that do more work than what you get paid for. That's right. You absolutely have to. It's about giving. And if you don't give out to to the community, if you're not putting out there for the universe, you're hurting yourself in the process. That's right. Because you're not going to get anything back. That's right. So as long as you keep putting out, there's no 
there's no way that you're not going to get back what it is that you deserve because okay. you've been putting it out there in, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people I feel as though are missing that they want handouts. They want something in their hand. They want people to, whether it's support or you want somebody to buy your merchandise or whatever, but you're not going out and supporting anybody else. You're not else. supporting nobody else. Right. So you yeah. got to show that love first in order to get it, but that, that, that involves work. Getting out there on you're your right. feet. Yeah. You're right. Right. You're right. And a lot of people are not willing to do that. It's, it's more of a... I guess it's you can't really blame the person because if you don't have uh, other people who are willing to teach teach mm -hmm. that and to kind of communicate that, then of course nobody's going to know. But again, if you're not reaching out for those answers, neither. You're right. So you're you're not wanting to learn anymore. Some mm -hmm. people may feel like they already know everything that comes to it because they have I don't know two thousand friends on Facebook and they feel like they're doing something because you got twenty of those friends who like your videos and mm -hmm. they show up for your shows, whether it's in. Fayetteville or South Carolina, any mm -hmm. state, you know, and you feel like you've made it. That's right. But then you have these goals, you're not willing to get yourself out of your phone, you know, that's from right. social media and get into books. And, oh, man, that's why I ask as far as reading, because I'm getting back into reading. I love reading. Uh -huh. I love to just be creative, but we don't pick up books anymore. We don't. We don't like to read. We, we like to look at videos. Mm -hmm. And that's why all of the, the knowledge that we gain and the way that we gain the knowledge is looking at videos and then it's the wrong stuff that we kind of absorb. But everything that you consume is important. Exactly. To, to what you're reading, to what you're watching, what you're eating, mm -hmm. the people that you listen to, the people that you keep around you, the support that you have. Mm -hmm. What do you say to yourself when you wake up in the morning? Where's your motivation at? Like you said, if you don't have any passion, man, if you don't have any passion for what it is that you are doing, mm -hmm. it's empty. It's empty. It's that's right. Empty. That's so, right. That's, that's right. Because a lot of people are lost, man. They don't know really. People, somebody told me a long time ago, man. People don't know what they want. You got to tell them what they want. Yeah. And and, and and it's and as true as that is, it's sad. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people really don't know who they are. You know, they don't really know where they're going in life. You know, until they turn on YouTube and they say, "Hey, well." Well, you know, something I could do. Right. Yeah, yeah. They're look, doing it, yeah. they're making all this money, yeah. getting all that. Yeah, yeah. Future's going that way, so let me just do like future. You, you know, it's like forgetting that they're their own being. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a it's a great significance as just being you, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You exist out here. There's something in you that's different too. You know what I'm saying? Again, people don't want to do the work. Because right. work requires you to get to know yourself and your inner self and uh -huh. to be able to be an individual mm -hmm. and then do your thing with among other people even though it's not it's in the same genre but not actually the same thing mm -hmm. but to be able to do the same thing if I'm writing and you writing but I'm writing from a place that I know because I've actually researched and looked inside and mm -hmm. said okay this is something that I know and I went past you know my hangups or my hiccups and I still mm -hmm. have but it's like to get past that then you'll be able to be more creative mm -hmm. when you do that and exactly. the thing with you but a lot of people don't want to do the work the work is you have to separate yourself sometimes from people even if it's lifetime younger people and it may not be like forever but you may have to just separate yourself and say you know what i gotta figure out what i want because right now i'm it's about us you know it's that's about right what we used to do like we that's used right to be how we used to be like this yeah we used to be like that but I, clearly that's not where i need to be at, that's right? right i need to figure out where i'm at right now and where i want to go and then start doing what i need to do in order to manifest that and that's just right show progress towards what i'm going but if yeah. I'm not and you're around the same people, they like, yes. dude, I like the, this you. I like this you. I don't mm -hmm. know what you got going on right now. They're not helping you elevate. Sometimes you got to leave people behind. And not it's just out of love. Oh, yeah, I've done that. A, I've done that a lot, man, because. Mm -hmm. People, man, people, man, your grand stage is waiting for you to dig inside who you are anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like people, you know, I analyze a lot of stuff when I watch TV. I analyze a lot of artists and everything. Mm -hmm. And what I do notice about a lot of artists, whether they're whack to me or not, they have individuality, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? People are trying to be like them because they are who they are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They didn't pick up the uh the mic and say, Hey, well, I wanna be yeah. I wanna be Lauren Hill, you know what I'm saying? They mm -hmm. you know she picked up the mic and said, I wanna be Rihanna. Mm -hmm. You know, and then she said, I wanna be um Mary J, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And then, you know, Omar Tariq said, I'm Omar Tariq. Jane mm -hmm. Petty said, I'm this. So the only people that's really making it are the extraordinary individuals, and that's what the carbon copies don't see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's don't, why they don't, understand they don't understand that. You know what I'm they saying? They see instant results. They see instant success on Instagram. Exactly. And they see, you know, like I was looking at um, the birthdays, which I got to do uh -huh. in a minute, but um, I was doing the birthdays and the people were like, oh, this is a, the YouTube sensation or YouTube channel. I'm like, 
when we when you start posting celebrity YouTube people like <laughs> right yeah it's, it's, and it's like it's wild this an Instagram man. model this an Instagram oh oh the Instagram oh, oh god Lord, that's that's out of hand <laughs> that's getting out of hand it is it is it's getting out of hand man I'm talking really people is. are really believing that those apps are really them yeah the filters real. are really them and it's not it's so not my little niece asks who you are and that's um I'm gonna show you his book Nisi because she into chocolate so okay. No, I'm talking about dudes. And she thinks, oh, <laughs> right, right. That would be you, sweetheart. That would be you. Oh, that would be Anthony Langston, sweetheart. He wrote a, a book. I'm gonna let you read it. It says "Good Girls." It's about good girls, so stay a good girl. You you do your thing. So okay, it's coming back to you. Now. But one one thing um, I'm gonna say this is that I respect what you're doing because you're stepping outside, not just doing music, but you're tapping into your writing. Mm -hmm. Like you're not just staying in one lane. You mm -hmm. have to develop different lanes for yourself in order to develop different ways of having income. Mm -hmm. If you really want to eat off the things that you do. Mm -hmm. So big respect to, to writing because a lot of people don't do this anymore. Oh yeah, but I have to because I started with that. Right. I'm talking, I started out writing poetry. But now first. you have it in your hand. Yeah, now now it's now it's on my hand it seems real. I it's, used to it's real. Like, work inside of the jail, um, speaking and stuff, and I would see all these artists and their writings and they would show them to me and share them with me, but I want to see this come in their hands. You know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. want to see this now in their hands from those people that I saw. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So to see something like that in the story that you have, that's nothing but respect. Thanks. That's a lot of respect. So, yeah, just keep it going. This is this is awesome. It's definitely. Yeah, I, definitely. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So, yeah, I, videos always touch somebody. So I'm sure somebody's going to be touched by this. And even your brother, mm -hmm. ready to see his book. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. After we be finished this round of time before Sunday, we'll be done. Mm -hmm. Get a world waiting for it. Let him know that. Exactly. And I told him, you know, he kept getting discouraged a couple times. He's like, well, I mean, he's like, what if it don't touch the people I want to say? That's not even your issue. The purpose, you was given a book, you mm -hmm. was given that to write. It's not for you. It's for mm -hmm. somebody else. So whatever it is that you're writing, mm -hmm. it's not for you. It's, it's going to touch else. somebody. And that's what I told him. I said, yeah. it's not, you are so you trying to worry about who is going to, um, how many people you're going to do, whatever. You're trying to control the situation. That's not for you to control. That's not for you. It's for you to get all you all you was do, done is you're the vessel to get it out there. That's right. It's there for somebody else. Somebody else gonna pick up their book. Somebody else gonna read it, and it's gonna do. It's gonna help somebody out. That's right. It's gonna help somebody get to find it. Matter of fact, it may be like even with your book to be able to find it. Like you know what? I'm okay. I thought it was bad because I was like this, or because right. I, my lifestyle didn't actually measure up the way it's supposed to look. Yeah, like Yeah, exactly. To social media told exactly. me I should be living my life a certain way. Uh huh. But you live in your life, and you're still a good girl regardless of whatever else it happens. Exactly. You're doing your thing, and regardless of how you got there. It doesn't take away from who you are as a person. That's right. Absolutely. That's and right. Like I said, but like I said, somebody reading that book is going to see that and say, you know what? All the negative stereotypes and all the names that people were calling me, I ain't worried about that. I'm still a good girl. Y'all don't get to dictate and talk, call me what it is because I will only answer to what I want. If That's I'm right. A good girl, I will only answer. That's to that. right. So you call me whatever you want to. I'm only going to answer to what I know I am. That's time. right. Absolutely. So I'm, right. I'm really proud that you put that book exactly. out. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I think it's gonna work. Right. Well, I want you to let me know what y'all think of it when you finish with it, so okay. we can, uh, okay. you know, I would love to hear y'all input. Absolutely, and um, perfect segue as far as that. I'm just gonna get into this painting real quick so we can do the birthdays. Okay. But this painting here, um, my own personal story is that I'm an HIV activist. At 19, I came up positive for a test. Okay. So for me, it has always been education. You talk about education, and I believe that a thousand percent because I was here at this campus. Every time I had a paper to do, whether it was 15, 10, 20 pages, I um, related it to HIV and AIDS. And one thing about me was that I was always trying to find the answers for it. Because I felt like we were never given the answer that we were deserving of. And we still haven't got them now. Definitely. So I was trying to find the people who were doing what I wanted to do as far as advocating and going out there and speaking. I didn't see anybody who was public about it whatsoever. So I took it upon myself. In 2009 is when I started working with a nonprofit. And I started speaking. I started going inside the jails and telling my story. We would uh -huh. be in rap sessions, and I would be sitting with inmates who were this close to me, and we would just have, like, real talks about any and everything. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just always about that. Talk about their life. That's how I started seeing the writings and stuff from them. But then I took it from there. I graduated from um, Fable State in 2011. I quit working with the nonprofit. In 2012, I started working with uh, MTV. I got in touch with MTV from there. was Alicia Keys with major campaigns. Mm -hmm. And I was traveling up and down the East Coast speaking, but my, my, my topic was always the cure. I was always looking for the cure. It wasn't me being angry. It was just more of, I'm in this now. So, yeah, we're going to find out what's going on because I'm starting to notice that y'all are coming into our, our neighborhoods 
and telling us what we need to do. This, people from the state, you have people who don't look like us That's coming right. from the state, mm -hmm. coming into our neighborhoods, telling us to do testing and stuff, but you don't even know the real lives that we live. We're not worried about our health when we're worried about employment or how to get from point A to point B mm -hmm. or uh, food on our tables. Y'all not helping the real situations that would help us to focus on our health. Y'all more worried about pushing testing and getting somebody else in another system. Definitely. That's the way Definitely. I see it. So I started looking into the timeline. I did this major PowerPoint presentation that I haven't shared. And this is like the first time people are hearing that I did it. But I started breaking down the timeline on AIDS. Okay. Because one thing we don't do, we don't read. We do not read. So That's when right. I started reading and focusing on the timeline on HIV and AIDS, I started to notice some things that didn't make sense. Like, there's a lot of things that don't make sense when it comes to it. Okay. Like, straight up. I, there's a lot of things I don't really advocate for. I'm not going to push pills. I'm not going to push testing. It's more about really getting to the youth before they have to put themselves in a predicament to take a test. For okay. One. That's my focus when it comes to the talks that I have. But as far as the education, going back to that, I started to see, like, in 1983, this is where this painting comes from. All right. This is going to be a series of paintings. In 1983, they considered homosexuals, hemophiliacs, and all Haitians to have AIDS. Okay. How do you consider every person from one country to have AIDS? It doesn't make sense if you it go doesn't. back and read on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So what happened in 1983 was that Haitians were coming to the U.S. to find a better way of living. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, you put two and two together, you know the history about this country. Exactly. You know how I already we, know. Yeah. we have to fight for human rights before any kind of civil rights. Mm -hmm. So to me, it was more about them not wanting Haitians to come into this country rather than them looking out for their health or okay. looking out for the public's health in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And it was this big thing as far as like the Pope going down there to speak to, to everyone in, in Haiti and telling them to stay and promising all this stuff. But that's what this piece is representing. It says in French, we want our freedom to live okay. because... Haiti is a rich country, just like the uh, continent, uh, continent, the continent mm -hmm. of uh, Africa. Okay. Gold, copper, silver, and that's what that gold is for. It's represent the gold, mm -hmm. and then the blood dripping down is, of course, the blood that yeah, you put blood. into the fight. Uh -huh. um, so I'm gonna do every country that's been affected by that and give history on it. And that's my story, and that's why everything just comes together, man. Everything comes together. So. That's what I'm going to start doing from here on out. And I wanted to introduce this piece because I started working on it last week. I was at a, um, a art market. Okay. And I set up my t table. I'm a painter. I'm a motivational speaker. Um, so I had a couple of pieces out there, but I was actually working on this live. And All I right. finished it. Just finished it last night before Sway Night. I host a poetry night called Sway Night. Okay. Um, major success. Thank you to everybody who came out. But that's what it says in, um, in French is that we want our freedom to live. And it says AIDS 1983. That's the story behind that. But education, you got to have a passion for one. It goes back to everything. The passion that you got to have to keep mm -hmm. pushing. It goes back to the words that were being told to me when people I had. Oh, man. I had so many people. I had a lot of thank yous. I had a lot of people who supported me. Mm -hmm. But I had a lot of others who didn't want to hear anything I had to say. Who wouldn't even shake my hand when I did go inside the jail. Who looked at me like I was a murderer when I would sit down with somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... A lot of people would take that and wouldn't even go forward, like after those 90 days, you know? After those 90 days, you would have a lot of people quit. But I had to realize that there was a mission in front of me, and it was a lot bigger than it being a test. That's right. A whole lot bigger than it being a test or even being this this cause. But this cause is now my passion, you know? Mm -hmm. But on a totally different level than most. Because I'm not, I'm not down for pharmaceutical companies. I feel as though it's more about profit than you trying to help somebody. But... I can get into that all day, every day, mm -hmm. because I can speak on it for hours. On, for hours. Well, that's what I believe, man. I was going to say that, too, but I didn't know how far you was going to say it. Oh, man, I'll take yeah. it there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll yeah. take it there, and yeah. I'll, I'll go in on it. And I would love to have conversations, more conversations like that on Facebook Live and get other Definitely. people's opinions and stuff, Definitely. because we got to start talking about it. Definitely. Because it's real. Even the, the topic of cancer is coming up, and how chemotherapy is, is not really helping anybody. I feel as though what really happens is, when they have the mind, they have the body. If you believe that something's going to help, then it's going to help. But if you believe that you have a death sentence over your head, guess what's going to happen? You're going to you're you're die. die. You're going to die. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So as long as they have the, the ability to put fear inside of you and tell you, and there's no freedom when it comes to any of this. They tell you got to take pills, and if you don't, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you right now, it's been over a year and a half since I stopped taking my medication. 
and I have been the healthiest I've ever been in 11 years. Gotcha. So I'm a living testimony. This is something I'm not just speaking on, but I want people to see it for themselves. It's a mental thing. It's a thing. mental thing. Definitely. And it took for me to learn that and to get rid of the fear to actually live it now. Mm -hmm. So I want people to see, don't live in fear of anything of what some doctor has to say to you or some specialist. It's not even HIV, it's diabetes. This mm -hmm. is cancer. This is all health disparities. But you have to control your mind first before you allow somebody else to tell you what's going to go on with your life because right. it's in your hands. That's right. So manifest, that. manifestation, I've learned so much. I'm only 30. I turned 31 this year, but between 20 and 30 years old, when I hit 30, that's when it just clicked to me. I let go of a bad habits and from there, just letting go of the medication over a year ago, I've had the, more, the most freedom I've had in, again, in 11 years, but I've been the healthiest that I've been. So, that's just my message, but that's why I wanted, I wanted to introduce that real quick before you went into the birthdays. Okay. And how everything just kind of ties in together with okay. your message, with this book, when we're talking about the work and everything. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'll, well, I'll post the whole, the love bad thing. I hope, yeah. So people were asking about, about that. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to mix it or what, it goes in, what actually goes into it. The love. I'm about to write it again, but if you just put the notes in. Right. I'll put the notes in because we got to start wrapping it up. For this hour, and we gotta get into the birthdays. Birthdays, birthdays. birthdays. indeed. But I gotta take a break too, and we gotta pay some people. We gotta okay. Pay some bills. Pay some bills. Okay. So we'll be right back. To me, so you can see me. Okay, so we'll be right back. More of the Ray Thomas Variety Show. Yeah. Ray Thomas Variety Show is coming up on BroncoIRadio.com. Can, can I see the book? Oh, yes, I'm here. Are we live? Are we not live? No, no. Okay, great. Okay. Oh, yeah. That was dope. That was dope. That was dope. And you really and you addressed some some strong points right there too. Because you know, um, 